it has been a meteoric rise for Southern Illinois. Winners of six games in a row, one game out of first place, giving their fans visions of another gilded age of Saluki basketball. Welcome to Saturday primetime in the Missouri Valley Conference. The biggest crowd of the year expected at the Banterra Center tonight for a rivalry matchup featuring Southern Illinois and the Missouri State Bears. Welcome inside the Banterra Center. Connor Onion joined by Mike Trude and Trey Reamer on the sidelines here momentarily. Tonight's matchup is of the top team and the bottom team in the preseason poll in the Valley, but the standings right now have flipped. SIU one game and a half out of first place. Missouri State at five and six, floundering a little bit down there in seventh place at the start of tonight's game. Now joined by Mike Trude, and I guess let's start with this. What are you more surprised by, SIU success or Missouri State underwhelming so far? I think I'm, I'm more surprised by Missouri State Drake and Darren DeVries showed a year ago what you can do with a brand new roster. They won the regular season last year. Missouri State loaded with talent, preseason, first team in the league, and has just not played well together and earned, find themselves two games under 500. Some believe maybe they figured it out or started to figure it out the other night, and a lot of that has to do with Gage Prim. Yeah, he's a phenomenal player, a wide body underneath a transfer from Aurora, Colorado, on the road especially, averaging about 15 points per game, about four rebounds per game. He, along with Tulio De Silva, give them a big one-two punch underneath. How about Lance Jones' overtime on Wednesday? You know, Southern needed somebody to come up special. McGill fouled out. It was up to Lance to take over the game, and he did. Scored the final eight points to will the Salukis to that win. They need a big one tonight out of Lance Jones. Mike, your keys to the game are brought to you by Vic Canning Chevrolet, home of the lifetime powertrain protection. And for Missouri State, it's minimized turnovers. They're averaging about 14 a game, and it's led to a lot of transition buckets for opposing teams. Team play, they've been struggling this year, trying to get a cohesive unit. Dana Ford wants five guys that are going to care about each possession of the basketball. For the Salukis, contain Missouri State's two-headed monster. That is Tulio De Silva and Georgie Prim, averaging better than 25 points per game between the two of them. And Southern needs to rise to the occasion. This is one of those games that you've got a great crowd. You've got an opportunity to make a big statement in the league enjoy that and play well there's some youthful energy on the sidelines today you combine the ages of the two head coaches not even 70 years old no i Dana know 35 two really up and comers as they call them and it ought to be a great one tonight ryan mullins has seen the crowds grow and grow on this winning streak his team has won nine in a row at home and off we go. McGill steals the tap, and SIU starts with it. We cannot wait to bring you this one tonight. Northern Iowa's already won today, so SIU needs to keep pace with the first base. Plays Panthers with a win tonight and remain a game back. Missouri State is very long. They're very tall. They're very physical on the inside. They have the capabilities of overwhelming teams. They just haven't done it this year. Eric McGill played sick in the last game. He drives and kicks out to a Suggs three. Missouri State rebounds and bring it into the front court for their first possession. A lot of high-low that you'll see with the two bigs and Tulio De Silva is the first to break the seal. Dana Ford wants the big guys, De Silva and Prim, to do the bulk of their scoring. He wants them to be aggressive on the inside, get the ball, not necessarily kick it out. If they get double teamed, yes, but try to be very aggressive offensively. That's where their biggest advantage is tonight with their size. Missouri State is the biggest team Missouri Valley Conference. McGill wiggles his way in. Out for Suggs. SIU late in the clock. Aaron Benson with four to shoot. Going in on Prim. That back one ball. And Missouri State goes one and out on their first two trips defensively. And a foul on Marcus Damas guarding the Silva. Let's go to Trey Reamer, our sideline reporter. Winning streak here at the Banterra Center. Six consecutive wins. As for Missouri State, still looking for the first win here in Carbondale since 2014. Tonight is Saluki Jam Night. The first 250 students that came in got one of these shirts. Instead of Space Jam, says Saluki Jam. The promotion really targeting the students here at SIU to come pack out the Banterra Center, support the Salukis. And guys, that's something that they've been doing here quite well is packing out the Banterra Center. 
you saw that t-shirt giveaway. Thank you, Trey. Josh Hall with a layup for Missouri State. They get the uh, biggest crowd and biggest promotion of the season. The Bears came in preseason number one. And a loose ball picked up by Ross Owens, but given right back to SIU. And Benson goes off the glass and down. Good hustle, way to get on the floor by Southern and keep that possession alive. Ross Owens nearly saved it for Missouri State. Right back to Prim. And there's the two-headed monster to Silva and Prim keeping it alive. Nobody checked out to Silva on the weak side. Oh, look at that from Gage Prim. They call him an old-school big man, and that's why a little sky hook on the baseline. I've watched some Missouri State games this year. That's not uncommon for him to do the little sky hook. He's expanded his range as the season has gone on. Hit a couple of mid-range jump shots against Illinois State. And the mask leans in and goes glass. Marcus had the most trouble this year against Missouri because of the length and the quickness. Josh Hall, who's been guarding Marcus, has that length and that quickness. So we'll see what Marcus is able to get done on the offensive end. Ross Owens jacks up the three. You know, he's excited to play tonight. He's from Woodlawn, less than an hour from here. SIU pushes back the other direction and they have to get reorganized. Oh, great pass from McGill. Leads to a Barrett Benson layup. That was beautiful. Nobody saw Benson come back from that weak side, and McGill found him, and we're nodded at six. Seen a lot of attention on Eric McGill from that Missouri State defense early on. Driving and kicking. And Prim gets bumped. Really late foul. late foul. And that's two now on Suggs. That initial foul did not go on Damascus. It went on Ronnie Suggs, so he's got two early here. Watch it again. Gets by, and Suggs did come over. He did foul him. There's no question about that. SIU will get Trent Brown off the bench. Dana Ford has a, a lethal weapon off his bench. Keandre Cook that Ronnie Suggs was expected to guard tonight. And before Cook can even get into the game, Suggs might be out for the first half. Yeah. And Georgie Prim is not the guy you want to send the foul on either. 73 for center. Hits both of those and they're back up two. So Keandre Cook is going to be a mismatch nightmare now with Suggs on the bench with two fouls. Gill finally gets free for one, but got stuck in the neck on a three. Missouri State, they're in the middle of the league pretty much all across the board statistically. Offense, defense. Rebounding, they should have an advantage tonight against the smaller SIU team. And good defense on to Silva. Trent Brown had the initial D, and it's out to SIU. And those were the double teams that they're going to do on the Silva. Well, guys, Missouri State's head coach, uh, Dana Ford, made an announcement back on January 30th that Tyreek Dixon was going to have to have season-ending surgery. Now, he missed five games prior to the announcement with the shoulder complications, but now it's official. He started the first 17 games of the season for the Bears, but now it's over. He actually had to sit out the 2018-2019 season at Missouri State as well to satisfy the NCAA transfer rules as well as he started out his first two college years at Middle Tennessee. So kind of a tough pill to swallow and a hurt uh, shot to the uh, Missouri State bench, guys. Back to you. Thank you, Trey. Tyreek Dixon, Dana Ford, as head coach, said that they miss him the most defensively on the perimeter. And, you know, you've seen that in games like Northern Iowa when they gave up 17 threes. Exactly. And he's, according to Dana, one of the only guys who can go get his own shot. And he said he didn't recruit enough playmakers. And he said that's on him. And Tyreek was one of those guys who he could count on. Ross Owens causing some problems early on defensively. 
didn't do anything special just stayed in front of Lance Jones and Lance knocked it off his own knee out of bounds. Age Prim had four early points and there's the range. Had a sky hook now mid range jump shot. The Bears are up four. Age Prim has turned it on especially the last four games. Took him a little while to get into the starting lineup. He's been unstoppable the last four. 17 points per game. Benson left all alone. And the big man drills a three. Benson came into the night questionable. Dinged up with an ankle injury Wednesday night. Playing on some adrenaline right now. Already got seven in the ball game and looks pretty sharp on the offensive side of things. Three goes down from Josh Hall. He'll give him that shot, 24% shooter. And Hall willing to take it. Six for 25 coming in, so that's when you say, okay, maybe take one more step out next time when he's got the ball out there near that three-point line. Well, that's one of the things Missouri State's been missing, too. They've got the inside presence, but can they knock down enough threes to keep those guys opened up? Is the mask going to the free throw line for a couple. Well, how good is he in drawing the contact? Still able to get a good shot off. That almost went down the old conventional three. Here's the drive, gets the contact, still had great presence to get it up there, just didn't go down. Pass coming off back to back 20 point games 28 at Drake, 22 at Evansville. First time in his career for the freshman that he's done that. Hasn't been in the lack of minutes either. Here comes Keandre Cook as well. He replaces Prim and Carrington Davis into the ballgame for Lance Jones. Davis will probably check Keontre Cook with Ronnie Suggs in foul trouble for SIU. Fair go through for Marcus Damask. And SIU brings it within two. Missouri State had lost three consecutive games before they got right against Illinois State Wednesday. Black eyes up the three and batted around underneath there. Missouri State recovers. Hall can't put it back. Hall gets it again. And Cook right off the bench, bags a three. DeAndre Cook, the leading scorer for the Bears at 15 a game. Can't give him three looks at the bucket, that's for sure. And they Southern just didn't do a good job closing off the defensive boards. Pollard with the call. Owens thought he had good defense on the play, but Pollard saw it differently. Pollard, the one you were befriending before the game? Yep. Yeah. We go way back. <laughs> well, I would ask you how far, but you got mad at me the last time I asked one of those questions. <laughs> got an abacus. <laughs> Miguel snakes his way into the paint. Oh, and to Silva. With that long wingspan, able to knock it away. And never left his feet, just put his arms straight up in the air. And McGill went right into the block. Skip out to Owens for a three. And he got this one. He looks over to that Woodlawn section. Bunch of his friends and family here tonight. And the Illinois native puts the Bears up eight, forcing an SIU timeout. And it's not that Southern's not playing good initial defense. It's the secondary shots that they've been giving up too many offensive rebounds on. And a skip pass there, Francois just couldn't get out quick enough on Owens, and he drained the three. And the Bears now with their largest lead at eight, 19 to 11. Ross Owens, he's a he's a senior walk-on. Hasn't played a lot his first three years. Just his second start. He hasn't played a lot before the last three games. He had played 18 minutes total on the season until three games ago. But Dana Ford's mantra after that blow up the other night on his post game show was I'm going to play guys who want to win who want to play and he said Ross Owens is one of those guys and he started him last game and started him again tonight he's going to I'm going to start him the rest of the year 
for a guy who hasn't started in three plus years. But he said about Dana Ford said about his NBA roster. If he had an NBA roster, he'd be cutting guys. Yeah. Send a message. Benson's been the answer offensively so far. Carroll's in on Grimm, but given no ground. Davis way off on the three. He had no legs underneath him, just kind of rushed that shot. Josh Hall. And Dana Ford does not want that shot that early in the shot clock from Josh Hall. Now, if it went in, he would have loved it. McGill so quick, no finish. Missouri State has a three on two at the mass trail to play. And they share it down to Hall, and there's two more for Josh Hall. So a double digit lead, SIU has, has rarely fallen behind early in games on this six game winning streak. Here they are down double figures. Francois, corner three. That's a nice quick answer, but Southern's got to get it done on the defensive end of the floor. Grim, turn around. Down short, down to Damas. There's the stop you were calling for. And the rebound, more importantly, the rebound. Damas got him a little behind Benson. He got fouled anyway. And he'll shoot two after the break. So a big start for Josh Hall to this game. Seven points, that's the difference. Great crowd, great atmosphere tonight, and some cotton candy. Mm, yum. <laughs> Good smells in here, too. Connor Onion, Mike True, Trey Reamer, and Jeremy Chin is here tonight. He's getting ready for the NFL Combine, and uh, he's nice enough to join us here at courtside after a nice hand that uh, he got here at center court. Welcome back. Good uh, to see you. No, I'm happy to be here. Uh, that was a pretty cool experience, what just went down. So I'm very happy to be here. You looked like a natural working in the crowd, too. I think you made the whole 360 <laughs> turn, yeah, made we, the salute. I routine it in my mind just about five seconds before I went out there. How's everything going? I know you're down south getting ready for the combine right now. How are the workouts going? Yeah, every, everything down south is going great. Uh, I'm training down in Dallas, Texas right now. Um, I'm loving it. Um, the people that I'm training with, they really know what they're talking about. Um, you know, they're, they're experts. It's one of the best training facilities in the country. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be where I am, and I'm excited. Are NFL workouts different than, than college workouts? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the big change you've had to make? Oh, uh, well, really, you know, just Combine specific training, just in general. Uh, you know, I don't. We don't lift a lot of heavy weight, but we move weight and we move it fast. So that's probably the biggest difference. You know, going to squatting, you know, 600 pounds to just squatting 135 pounds and moving it really fast. So, you know, just the type of workouts that we do. How much did your performance in the bowl game open up some people's eyes? Yeah, you know, coming from a small school, it's always we've always got a lot to prove and a lot to show. You know, playing against the top, you know, FBS guys and Power Five guys. So. You know, just being out there, I, I think showing that I can, you know, compete at that level and compete against the best of the best really helped me a lot. And practices are almost as important as the game itself because you've got people there all week long judging, correct? Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, practices is this game day every practice. SIU's cut a, a ten point deficit down to five, trying to make it a a bigger run here out of the timeout. Barrett Benson leading them with seven. It's Josh Hall with seven for Missouri State. McGill off the shot fake. Three for Francois. And it's a one for two start, but kept alive. And Benson on the reattack. And a foul on Missouri that State. Bailed out with a foul there, too. Visiting with Jeremy Chin, getting ready for the NFL Combine, former Saluki safety. What would uh, you like to run in the 40 at the Combine? What's your goal right now? My goal is a, a 4 3 9. What have you been running? They put the clock on you? No, we haven't run a full 40 yet. Um, but, you know, my splits right now, that's what it's adding up to. And I run I run perfect. If I run perfect, I'll run in the four threes. Eric McGill makes it a 7-0 burst for SIU. Lamont West way off on the three. And we've got a stoppage. Cook lost a contact lens. He found it. 
Hate it when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of this crowd here tonight, Jeremy Chin? It's rocking. <laughs> it's what happens when you win six straight. It's amazing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Winning solves a lot of issues. A lot of problems. <laughs> a lot of problems go away when you win. Substitution for the Bears, number four, Javante. So you're going to sign some, some autographs at halftime of you. Uh, Worked on the John Hancock a little bit. <laughs> had to practice it. Yeah, I mean at the Senior Bowl, that's all we did. So, yep. is it going to be JC, J Chin? How have you toned it down? I just right now I'm just writing Chin, <laughs> just my last name. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> throw a number two in there or no? Yeah, I throw a two in there. Okay. We'll see if it um, progresses, but I'm liking the Chin right now. Gill off the shot fake. Oh, we got a shot swatted. Benson on the recovery. And Prim knocks it away. And a bad scramble. Loose ball picked up by the Bears. Cook always in range. Benson the rebound. They're getting a little three happy now. Missouri State is. And they've missed their last threes. Their last three threes. And Southern's done a better job of coming out and checking them. Must be a pretty cool job to sit and talk basketball. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah, it's almost as cool as the NFL, I guess. There's the mask rolling one home. It's a 9 0 Saluki Spurt. What is your timetable from now until you head to the combine? Yeah, so, you know, tomorrow I go back to Texas and continue training on Monday, and I'll be down there until the 26th, and I go to Indianapolis and. Um, Got a foul on Barrett Benson, pushing Gage Prim. Do you build up to a certain point and then drop it off for the combine? Yeah. When do you get to the max and then ease off and be at your best? Yeah, so this this past week was our, our you know, our last really aggressive week. Now we're kind of toning it down. Um, do some mock draft situations early this week, early next week, and then really kind of progress it and recover. So, you know, we're 100% ready to go by combine time. There's some of your teammates. I think you know some of those guys yeah, in there. Some of those guys. Yeah. <laughs> those are my brothers up there. <laughs> how how nice is it to leave the program where you left it to yeah. where it's going forward now? Uh, it's definitely nice. You know, coming my junior year, I was, we were two and nine, and then coming this last year, seven and five. So, you know, the, the change the culture around a little bit, um, just get this program back in the, on the right path. Is, it definitely is very meaningful to me. It's fun you know, to play meaningful games in November, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I wish I could have played a few more. <laughs> we do too. Yeah. Should have. Yeah. Julio De Silva's got a mismatch on McGill. Uh, McGill holds his own against a bigger player. That's how you'll get it back. De Silva's begging for Jerry Pollard to overturn it, but not a chance. And Southern now with a chance to retake the lead. Jeremy, you're from Indianapolis. Will you stay in the Fishers area during the combine? No, not during no? the combine. Yeah, I'll be I'll be in our hotel during the combine, but afterwards, I'll, I'm staying right there at home. It's got to be nice. Yeah, it is. <laughs> we'll deal with the wraparound, Stephon Jeremick playing in just his second Valley game with the offensive rebound. Locked in, reset. Jones gets oh. the bounce. <laughs> 11 in a row for SIU. And after a 10-point deficit, they're up one. Picked it up defensively, and were able to convert on the offensive side. Jones with a friendly rim bounce. The mask had a deflection. Francois gets involved, taking it away from De Silva. Jones. Rookies so will get a second chance. Jones explodes to the rim. That would have been an incredible and one, just like the one he had at, India, at, the, at Evansville the other day. Yeah, exploded. 11 in a row while Jeremy Chin sitting here at court side. It's good talking to you. Good luck at the NFL Combine, and uh, salute the nation is rooting for you, man. Thank you, Connor. Thanks, Jeremy. Good luck. Thank you. the Saluki team store SIU on an 11-0 run on a night where they've got their biggest crowd of the year at the Banterra Center 5,000 plus certainly oh and certainly pushing six 
Now, I know people take up more spaces in the bleachers than normal, but every uh, every other seat in here is a chair seat, so there is a, that's the best crowd I've seen in a couple, three years. During the Loyola game, we guessed 6,000, and attendance number came back uh, 4,900. Right. Didn't feel right. Didn't no, it really right. didn't. And both, both end zones are packed. There are some seats available up in the upper concourse level, but this is by far a great crowd, and so far, they've been treated to a really good game. Yeah. Missouri State's gone scoreless for the last 420. At the line for Southern Illinois, Lance Jones shooting that they two. Wouldn't score much past the 70s tonight. You have some offensive talent, but at least a really good SIU defense. Lance kind of bumped up on that free throw. Cranked it off the backside. I think that was the most impressive thing at Evansville the other night was the way he stepped to the line and just confidently made his free throws. Yeah. Yeah, both teams coming off wins. Missouri State with a win tonight can get back into the top half of the league and maybe get a bye. Kind of crazy that we're talking about that with Missouri State preseason favorite in seventh place right now. Bears trying to break this 12-0 scoring drought. Good kick save by Lance Jones. So Gage Prim is being guarded by Stevon Jeremick, who, healthy or unhealthy, Dana Ford was going to see him in this game tonight. Healthy or unhealthy with Barrett Benson, that is. Yeah, the key for Jeremick is to use his body and not his arms, because they are both big bodies. Faces up on him. Jeremick's got a little help around him with the mask. Spins the opposite way. Missed it bad. And a foul on the offensive rebound going against SIU. And there's that length for Missouri State able to get inside position against the Saluki guards and get those offensive boards. The foul was on Lance Jones. Checking in for Missouri State, State number one, DeAndre Good, Good on both the offensive and defensive glass. Since conference play began, they're the second best offensive rebounding team. Back might take a hit with Prim on the bench. Jeremy getting a hand for the job that he did on Prim as he goes to the bench for SIU. to contest it. Three and the run is over. That snaps a five-minute scoring drought for Missouri State and a 12-0 Saluki run. Jamonte Black is a 36% shooter, so you've got to respect it. And they've got Jamonte Black into a nice rhythm starting the last seven games. Upping his scoring average with each. McGill with a quick screech to the rim, but missed the layup. Eric's got that other gear again tonight that he had against Loyola. Cook. Took a lot of steps, a lot of contact with both players. Nothing called either way, and just an easy intercept by Josh Hall. And the finger roll goes through for Josh Hall. He's been the best bear in this game, nine points. Josh Hall, a transfer from Nevada. He's got some history with the Missouri Valley Conference before he came in. Lost to Loyola in the Sweet 16. He's part of the Wolfpack in 2018. Silva steps around Benson and out off the Bears. Crowd at the south end wants a foul call for over the back. Officials are letting play tonight. Apparently five fouls apiece. Usually in, in these physical games that SIU is involved in, both teams are usually in the bonus at this point. Jones falling back. Oh, look at the Silva get up for that rebound. Black makes the extra. And Hall is red hot. Turned around to this big Saluki crowd and was met with crickets. Six point lead for Missouri State right back. They got Owens on his second. Owens, his second personal foul. 16 foul on the Bears. Trent Brown back into the game for SIU, replacing Lance Jones. Prim coming back in for and Ross the Owens, for the so they got the two-headed monster Prim. back in together. De Silva is guarding Trent Brown. Really a switch after the inbound, right? Maybe not. 
No, because they want Hall on the mask. That's how big this lineup is right now for Missouri State. They can do that. The mask attacking the teeth of it. Oh, he got it and one. And a flex to boot. He went into the teeth of that defense on the baseline. Through contact from it looked like both guys. Here it is again. Goes into Prim and Prim just nails him to the floor. Somehow he got the shot off with the right hand, flipping it up, and it went down. And that's Prim's second foul, so he's got to sit down for the rest of the half. For the Saluki, Marcus shooting one. Mask Evan, one of those halves. Remember the half he had against. Valparaiso, now he misses one, but Marlon Francois with the offensive rebound. Benson, help was late, he scored. Benson with 11 already in the first half. So an SIU 11-0 run, Haydo Missouri State run, SIU back in a run now. In and out for Mosley. And Benson coming off his second double double. He's got both of those double doubles on the six game win streak. McGill gives SIU the lead back. His defender went underneath the pick of Barrett Benson, and McGill drained the three from deep. Hall, he's had the hot hand. Would you say it's a game of streaks? McGill. Oh, another one. Ten in a row for SIU. Six in a row for McGill. Exact same play. His defender went underneath the pick of Barrett Benson. There's Cook, out of control. Tip back goes up and in for De Silva. And a timeout for Dana Ford, the head coach from Missouri State. He is animated as he came off the court, onto the court to call that timeout. Josh Hall's been singeing the nylon for Missouri State tonight. He's got a game high 12, but Eric McGill climbing that way. He's got eight, including a couple of threes in a row. And he seemed to have that other gear again tonight here on the drive. Got it to go down. Here, watch. His defender, Jamonte Black, goes underneath the pick, does the same thing here. Two straight trips down the floor, two straight threes for the Saluki senior, and he puts the, the dogs back up by two. They were down six. 27 the last time at home. That was a career high against Loyola. Went to Drake a couple days later. 19. 19. Went to Evansville, sick as a dog. Still played. Well, gave, gave everything he had. He's been sick twice now yes. in the conference. And he got hot right after he was sick the first time, and he's gotten hot again after playing through the illness on Wednesday night. So Luki's trying to remain a game back to first place. There's a hand check against Jamonte Black, trying to guard the guilt. Northern Iowa's already won today, so they put the pressure on SIU to keep pace. Sutton is at the free throw line now Eric for the rest of the half, the shooting one of the bonus. McGill, McGill is one of the players that Ryan Mullen's opponent tonight, Dana Ford, pointed out as somebody that he can tell is really bought in to the Ryan Mullen system. A senior that stayed and wanted to win. He is an easy guy to get to listen to you. You see Eric McGill and Brian Mullins, a lot of one-on-one -on -one time in the gym with each other outside of practice. And man, it's led to a big streak the last three weeks for McGill. Reigning player of the week in the Missouri Valley. Mosley, stop and start into Benson. Last, no, oh, and De Silva over the top. It's not putting a body on him. He was able to just come right down the lane and get that 
Rebound over the top and slam it down to bring them back within a couple. Silva is scary athletic, isn't he? It's their sixth offensive rebound. It's his third. Yeah, he's athletically scary. Gill, a little two-man game. Out for Benson. Oh, and he got another three. And he's got 14. The six-foot-10 grad student with 14 points in the first half, as he said. Man. Five out of seven from the field. Two out of two from three. Cook on the reverse. No. Somebody should have taken a charge on that drive. Southern was fortunate that Cook missed, and Southern got the rebound. Gill on the mid-range. There's the Silva again. So seven. No, excuse me. His sixth rebound already. Cook with a brick. Head coach Brian Mullins telling his group to slow it down a little bit. Got a five point lead, milk the clock, get a good shot. Pivot foot. So close, wasn't <laughs> it? Nearly moved for Brown. Francois out of bounds. He had nowhere to go. Good defense. His defender. Keandre Cook put actually one foot out of bounds, which helps you. And Harwin had nowhere to go. Well, outside of the Northern Iowa game, you take away that game for Missouri State. Pretty good defensive team. Yeah. Outside of a game when they allowed 17 threes and 95 points. Cook couldn't find it to Silva. It was open underneath. He's got eight. Gonna reach his averages in the first half. Averages 10 points, seven rebounds. Already has the rebounds, needs two more for the points. The mask moving hall. One of those powerful drives from Marcus. Marcus has 10. Three Salukis and double figures already in the first half. These teams on offense. Oh, three going in for Josh Hall. He's got 15. Josh Hall already has more than his season high. His max was 11 in non conference against LSU. Brian Mullins already used their use it or lose it timeout. Banks it in. And Dana Ford just shrugs his shoulders and goes, you know what? Sometimes you just can't compete with that. Oh. Crowd rising up for the final five. Southern has fouls to give. A good foul by Eric McGill with 4.3. It makes them reset that offense. That's their last one to give. That's his first, so in no no. No problem at all with that. I like that. That's that's heads up smart playing. Suggs back in the game for SIU. Suggs replacing Marcus DeBag. Ronnie Suggs will not leave Josh Hall's belt on this particular possession. Into Silva. Cook will get the last shot from way out. Oh, we nailed it. DeAndre Cook. Maybe some karma back for Missouri State after the bank in three. It's one of those where you tip your hat again and just say, really nice shot, Keandre Cook. Brings the Bears back to within two. As the half winds down, we've got a great one here at the Van Terra Center tonight. It's been a very close game, tough on the inside. Tulio De Silva with the follow slam, part of his eight points. Josh Hall, he had 15 in the first half, including two threes, three threes rather, and that was Keandre Cook right at the end of the half. But Eric McGill, not to be outdone, hit two threes in a row. His teammate, Baron Benson, stepped outside for three of his 14, and Marcus Damask down in the block, two of his 10. Three Salukis and double figures. Southern leads it by two. We'll be back with the second half when we come back after these messages. 
moments away after a high octane offensive first half. Connor Runyon, Mike Trude back with Trey Reamer on the sidelines. Well, guys, senior uh, Tulio Da Silva is the son of a professional soccer player. In fact, he played soccer his whole life up until age 13. He decided, I'm going to hang up my soccer cleats and make the transition to basketball. When doing that, Silva said that the fast pace and the footwork from soccer really helped him become such a great explosive basketball player as we saw there in the second half. And uh, also, he said he, he played for the Brazilian national team, but his one goal is to do exactly what his dad did, and that is to play this game at the next level. Guys, back to you. Silva had a good first half. He was four for four from the floor, but Gage Prim somewhat invisible after the first four minutes. And left that one pretty short as well. He had a good angle, just didn't get the ball up high enough on the glass. Prim did have six points. All of them came early though. And Suggs drills a three. Suggs missed most of the first half with foul trouble. That's vintage Ronnie Suggs, isn't it? Gage Prim goes opposite on the reverse against Barrett Benson. Who's going to play the better D here in the second half? There, it wasn't defense optional. Both teams were shooting it extremely well. But the team that clamps down a little bit harder here in the second half is going to have the success. And both teams at, at 50%. Both teams come in on the season shooting 43% as a team. There's Barrett Benson going right at Prim. He certainly has the quickness on Prim. They are banging underneath. Benson has been critical for SIU on this six-game winning streak. And he's got the defense here. And Prim being a little bit stubborn on that particular drive, Barrett had really good position, and he just kind of said, I'm, I'm going regardless. And he came up short. off a screen to Silva hopping in easy one for Tulio to Silva he has not De missed a Silva. shot tonight he's five for five in the ball game four of them have been of the layup variety or a slam had a big rebounding first half too. Tulio to Silva right at his averages on the year 10 points seven rebounds in this game Suggs across the lane and he's been aggressive out of the timeout, or out of the halftime, he's taken three shots already. He took that right at De Silva. It was a nice move. De Silva with better defense. And Prim slips past Benson. Back and forth we go. Biggest lead for Missouri State was 10 in that first half. SIU responded 11-0 run. And it's been tight since then. Benson against Prim. We're going to see a lot of that in the second half, apparently. Boy, he can't guard him at all, can he? Those extra two inches and his length with his with his little jump hook is too much for Prim. You know, especially when Benson steps out and hits two threes on him in the first half. But back to the well with Prim. Reversing in. Leans in. No. And Benson's fouled. And fouled by Prim, I believe. Fouled at 30. No. Got De Silva. That's number one on De Silva. Here it is again. Prim backing him down, backing him down. Barrett with great position, and De Silva just kind of reached in. Could have gone on either guy, probably. Yeah. Sure could have. McGill. Oh, De Silva gets up, doesn't he? He was above, above the uh, the white block. That time he did it just to do it. Yeah. There's nobody around him. McGill with a tap back from Prim. And McGill going one-on-one -on -one with Owens. Damask a trail three. Fresh 20 for SIU. Lukies have played at the slowest tempo in the Valley this season. Shot clock at five. And Benson with his first miss from deep tonight. Was two of two before that. He had to really rush that one. Didn't get his feet set. End of the shot clock. And a carry called on Hall. 
Second time we've seen that in two home games. I didn't like it before, didn't really like it then either, but they called it anyway, and Southern increases the lead by one as we go to the first break. SIU had a two-point halftime lead. They've stretched it to three, stretched it minimally by uh, one point since the break, but Gage Prim and Barrett Benson banging inside tonight. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to watch those two. 6'8 against 6'10, bulk against not as bulky. Here's Prim driving hard. Nice spin move, left-handed shot, doesn't go down. Prim now comes back, slips inside, and gets the two to go down. Now Barrett with the nice little jump hook. He's got 18, matching his career high. So unless he is shut down completely in the final 1541, he's gonna set a new career high with every point he gets. And there's that salute. He's 13th in scoring defense. That's not going to stand tonight unless, again, the Bears totally shut down in the final. 1541. They've already got 47. Fortunately for SIU, the offense has followed. Giving up a lot of points tonight. Both teams still shooting around 50%. The Bears at 48, SIU right at 50. Which team will come down from that high first, if at all? They're both executing pretty well. The, the fear for Missouri State is, is Ross Owens goes out of the game. Uh, the fear was that the Silva and Prim might not be able to coexist at the same time, but they've done it beautifully tonight. Yeah, you, it's, it's, it's really kind of neat to see that those two, as I said, two-headed monster can play on opposite sides of the floor the way they've done and share the ball and, and do well. Right now, Prim on the bench and a foul out wide on Cook. Foul out one, Keandre Cook, his second personal foul. It's number two on Cook, uh, defending the drive of Lance Jones. Two team fouls on Missouri State. Southern yet to commit a foul. Free throws could be key in this game down the stretch. Benson trying to get it into Damask and in the process loses it to Lamont West. Just held it out too easily for West to get both his hands on the ball. The Silva, a couple of spins and a brick. And McGill secures it for SIU. First miss of the game for De Silva. West fell down, gets up to see Jones go past him. West back the other way. Strong drive and a finish. Lamont West, West Virginia transfer, averaging nine a game. Missouri State's so athletic. A lot of moves. They get to the hoop really, really well. Finishing has been the issue tonight. Benson passed West. So West has been heavily involved. That time it gets burned for Benson, who's got a new career high with 20 points. Bounds off Missouri State. Barrett Benson, 20 points. He's averaging 13 per game on this six game win streak. Great feed from Lance Jones. All he had to do was keep it in the air and lay it off the glass 4 2. Really, I'd say what, what kick started this winning streak for Southern was the double double yes. that he had against Drake. Yep. Really played well in that home game. Benson deep inside that restricted area, and he's shaking his head, saying, you can't stop me right now. Nope. He wants the ball. He's being aggressive. They're going to have to bring back Georgie Prim right now. And this could be huge. You don't want to just force feed it to Barrett, but he's doing such a great job of getting position on the block. You've got to give it to him. So Prim back in with two fouls. Keandre Cook also out there with two fouls for the Bears. In the big matchup, stretching out wide. Suggs kicked it. It's 
Devon Jeremick will Devon come back Jeremick. in for Benson. I like Jeremick that move. Cook off a couple screens. Black is right there all alone. McGill taps it away. Jones passes on the three. Sprays it out for Suggs. And a third chance coming for SIU. Off of Keandre Cook. What a heads up play by Ronnie Suggs. And Dana Ford has seen enough. He's come all the way out to half court to call a timeout. A couple of chair casualties as Ronnie Suggs went barreling into the bench. back up by five seven minutes gone in the second half trying to stay in second place in the valley and here's brian mullins on the outlook of the missouri valley conference right now <laughs> no, no i don't think anyone sneaks up on anyone in this league i mean everyone knows i mean there's no easy games in this league i mean you just go from one scout to the next and you just scratch your head and try to do your best and prepare your guys and, and the guys know how hard it is you know, to get any win in this league. So I think our guys understand that. Loved one of the quotes that, that Brian Mullins said recently, trouble will find you if you feel you've arrived. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, stay humble, stay hungry. The game is 25 minutes and 58 seconds old. Missouri State has led for 13 minutes. The Salukis for 12.58 heading into that timeout. Out of bounds off Missouri State. Yeah, both teams have made 20 field goals. Both yep. teams have made seven threes. It has been tight. Very tight. The difference right now is from the free throw line. Southern seven out of nine. Missouri State's only attempted two. That's the five-point difference. McGill on the no look. Jeremy couldn't handle. And was it out of bounds before the shot clock buzzer went off? I think they'll have to look at that. If it is, it'll be about a .5. He's going to put one second back on it. That was pretty heads up by Jeremy, too. So one second is going to allow a throw in and a quick shot. What are you going to draw, Brian? Now they're going to go to the, going to go over to the bench to try to find out exactly what's left. It's a break for SIU now. Brian Mullins can draw something up. Yep, and they know where they're going to get the ball in bounds. So it's going to be some type of quick hitter. A lot of times they'll do a, a quick handoff, but I don't think they even have time for a handoff and a shot. It's just got to be a lob in with a shot. This is like the worst place you can inbound the ball, oh, right? Absolutely. The corner is the absolute worst. No angles. Here's the play again. Jeremy, good hustle. Throws it off. And De Silva. Yep, right at one second. All right, you love yourself a good ATO. I think it's going to be McGill coming all the way around, maybe on a double screen to try to maybe shoot a 25-footer. There's the screen. Didn't get it off. Shot clock violation, Southern Illinois, Missouri State basketball. You've been watching your synergy. <laughs> <laughs> You've been in the film room. Man, that was good. Carrington Davis with a steal. Nice athletic play by Carrington. Bad spacing there. Get out of each other's way. Cook hems off. Suggs out for a Jones three. Prim rebounds. Lance is doing a nice job on Javante Black. Oh, a little reach in around the side. Jones, Jones with his second personal foul. That's 
number two on Jones. He's been able to avoid foul trouble tonight. Can't say that of his last three games. Here it is again. He does a great job of keeping him in front, and then he just kind of reaches, and that's just silly. Don't need to do that. You've got him way out by the hash mark with his back to you. So Southern gets Trent Brown into the game to check black. Owens deep in the clock, moving McGill. Fall away shot, a tough one goes through for Ross Owens. He's got five, that was a really nice move down on the block. Remember, Posting up the shorter McGill. Remember playing in front of a home crowd tonight. Ross Owens took Woodlawn to the semifinals in 2016. Davis the miss on the three. Owens. And he tracks down his own miss. And credit Keandre Cook for getting, tapping that rebound out for the Bears. De Silva's slide goes out of bounds. That was a great pass from De Silva to Prim. He just didn't see it coming. And the turnover, fortunately, for SIU gives it back to the Salukis. Ninth turnover of the night from Missouri State. The Bears trail by three. Hard to believe there are only three more home games yeah. at the Banterra Center after yep. this. For the Saluki men. SIU has it out of the timeout. Both teams shooting 47%. Benson back in. That was the best look he it made. Too easy. All it was too easy for him. I think he expected some contact. Ross Owens was looking at the stat sheet during the timeout. He's had the best plus minus in this game so far, but until then, that won't help it. No, he didn't have a turnover until that point. McGill shakes Cook. No bounce. Back to back layups missed for SIU. Heads up by Barrett Benson, getting a hand into the, into the lane and knocking that one out of bounds. These two bigs are running so hard in transition. Yeah, nobody is going to run away with this one, is, are they? They just seem to go back and forth and forth and back. Mosley in for Jamonte Black now. Brim's already hit one out there. Now takes Benson inside. Gets a step and banks it in. Uses the angle very, very well. Gage Prim. Yep, he's got 12 now. Came in averaging a little over 13. And it's back to a one-point game. And this Missouri State defense has hunkered down. Last four minutes, having a lot of bucket. McGill finds Benson, and there's a dunk. He leaves no doubt after a couple of missed layups. No, great feed by McGill, and Parrott left nothing to chance that time. Took it over the rim by himself. 22 points for Benson. He continues to add to that career high. He's in on the defense here. Three Salukis on the floor. And it was Brown that took it away, but out off him. Great hustle by Southern. A lot of contact on that possession. Here's the dunk. Watch the feed by McGill. Beautiful. Both guys came over to try to get Eric. No look pass. Josh Hall shut out since halftime. Where will the scoring come for Missouri State? Cook loses it on the way by and either out of bounds or a shot clock violation. Either ball. way, turnover number 11 now for the Bears. Came in averaging just under 14. And it's been a bugaboo of theirs. Missouri State, if they win tonight, it would be their first win against a team in the top half of the league. And McGill travels with it. And it's the sixth Saluki turnover. At Crenshaw on the call. 
Eric's able to get to the rim, but South uh, Missouri State doing a great job of weak side help defense coming over. There was defense that really powered their second half surge, finishing third in the league last year. Had a chance to win it late before losing their final two a season ago. The Bears did. Good defense. Bears got to go. Cook, off-balance shot, and a foul. It's going to go against Barrett. Just his second foul. A lot of contact being allowed. <laughs> that one they just felt was a little bit too much. Jerry Pollard with the call. Yeah, I tell you, the, the Saluki fans are booing, but that's a layup if it's not a foul. Prim was right there to finish it. And they're giving Cook two free throws. And Mullins doesn't like the fact that he's allowing Cook to shoot because Prim got the ball and laid it in. Rasheed Wallace, where he at? That's what Saluki fans are saying. And Cook is an 82% free throw shooter, so that is not normal for him to miss that free throw. Cook makes the correction. Just his first point in the second half. And again, you mentioned Josh Hall scoreless here in the second half after scorching the Nets for 15 in the first half. The mask on Hall, Prim comes over to help, and one for Marcus. He just muscled up on that one, drew the contact, the ball got away from him, and he still got it off the glass to go down. He was gonna go as soon as the bounce pass went, you see him going, draws the contact on Hall and gets it to go. Marcus with 13, the lead back to five. Black back into the game for Missouri State. The Damask is usually pretty mild-mannered, not too emotional, but a couple of times we've seen him show off the biceps tonight. He muscled up on that one, didn't he? Yep. And opposing coaches are going, I've got to watch this for three more years with this kid. This is the biggest deficit the Missouri State has faced tonight. Now facing a five-point deficit a couple of times. Catch and shoot three, partially blocked. Prim, follow-up missed. And Benson gets fouled. Dana Ford is looking for a jump ball. Foul on Cook. That's three on Keandre. And the Salukis with an opportunity to expand the lead to the largest they've had since the first half. Missouri State once led 21-11. That was their biggest advantage back in the first half. Hasn't gotten further than a five-point game since the Salukis went on an 11-0 run in the middle of the first half. A lot of time out in the perimeter here for SIU. Everything comes crashing in on Damask, and he gets swallowed up by Prim. Lukey fans want a foul. And Black drains a three. Jamonte Black. Huge three for Missouri State to bring it within two. What a swing. Salukis thought it was a foul. Missouri State went in transition. And we've got a two-point game. And Suggs gets bumped. Is that Cook? Yes, it, it is. is. That's number four, and that is a silly foul on Keandre Cook. So the top scorer for Missouri State with seven minutes to go in danger of fouling out. Jamonte Black pulling up and training a transition three. Coming into this game might be in a battle for first place with Bradley Loyola, Northern Iowa. That's what the projections said anyway. But the 
standings look like that. They're on the right. SIU a game and a half out after you and I's win today, and Missouri State trying to get back to 500 and back on the right side of the byline. You know, it just kind of shows you that you can do all the projections you want, all the things how teams should play, how they should be doing things, and until you get out there and you play those 40 minutes each ball game, the results are completely different, which is what we're seeing here in, in these projections. Nobody knows that better than Missouri State. Nobody knows it better. They were picked eighth last year. Won eight of ten to get into first place with two to play and then finish third. SIU on the out of bounds. Fit it into McGill. Scramble play. Suggs left alone. And Grimm rips the rebound and gets fouled. Jones was hit with a cheap one and had to go to the bench. Now he gets three. And here's Trey on the sidelines. Benjamin Jamonte Black and Isaiah Mosley, two guys that are used to playing with each other. They graduated from Rockbridge High School together, won a state championship their senior year. Now they both landed here at Missouri State. However, there was supposed to be a third man at this party, and that was uh, Daquan Harris who decided to back out, go play at Kansas. But Coach Ford said he's still very pleased to have both of these gentlemen. He said these guys are winners. They're gym rats, and they're coachable. And there's just a lot to like about these guys. And I think we'll be hearing a lot about these two guys as well in the next couple of years. Guys, back to you. Uh, Black and Mosley won that state championship at JQH Arena. And then Mosley committed the day after to Dana Ford, after they won that championship. That foul on Mosley will put Ronnie Suggs to the free throw line. And the Salukis are in the bonus for the rest of the ball game. Ronnie and Ronnie Suggs, Suggs is the, the best free throw shooter Louis SIU Louis has. 91%. Suggs hit a big three coming out of halftime. Those are his only three points tonight. Suggs has dealt with a couple of different injuries this year. Missed the first four games, the calf. A couple games mid-season with an ankle. Lead back up to three. Missouri State has not led here in the second half. And Suggs has now made 18 consecutive free throws. He's money. He is money at the line. Missouri State with Prim and De Silva on the floor at the same time, and it's into Prim. 17 points per game is last four. In on Benson, and a foul. That'll be number three on Benson. Called it on the floor, so no shot. Put 20 on the clock. Backdoor slip, easy one. Josh Hall finally breaks through here in the second half. Hall had 15 in the first half, none until the six minute mark of the second. Two point game again. Owens playing strong defense on Jones. Here's that matchup again. Jones in on De Silva in an offensive foul. And Lance quickly has four fouls. And De Silva had great position on this one. De Silva just sets up, waiting for Lance to come down. Never moves. Pretty easy call for the official. It's pretty impressive defensive work for a guy that's that athletic. Yes. Usually he tries to block the shot. The Silva putting Jones on the bench with his fourth foul. Bullet into Prim. Splits two. The Silva on the third try, no. And Benson finally ends the possession for SIU. Three great looks for Missouri State to try to tie the game. Suggs. Owen saves it for Missouri State. These two teams are playing hard. The offense has slowed down a bit since halftime, but the grit is not. And you think it should be easy around the basket there, 
as athletic as these guys are, and they just won't go down. Prim makes that 80% of the time. De Silva followed. De Silva followed again. Can't get it to go down. Brown rips that out of midair from Hall. Twelfth turnover now for the Bears. Under five minutes to play in the game. This one's going to the wire. Luki's got a post touch for Damas. He's doubled and fell. Salukis are in the bonus, so it'll be a one and one for Marcus Damas. Third on Josh Hall. Just backing him down. Boy, that was, <laughs> compared to what was going on earlier, not a lot going on there. He didn't really have anywhere to go, too. He was doubled, five were on the clock. Probably would have been a shot clock violation. Yep, very close to it. Damascus having a phenomenal freshman season. Leading scorer and passer. Without Aaron Cook, the senior point guard out for the season with a hand injury. Marcus with 15, that is his average on the year. Bears have gotten some good looks in the second half, including that last possession. All with a great find, De Silva can't handle it. Missed layups and not catching the ball if haunted Missouri State from tying or taking the lead in the second half. Turnover number 13 now. And key plays down the stretch, the Bears are not making, and they're right there in front of them. Final timeout coming up. McGill driving kick. The mass gets his own. Brown. Boy, he put everything into that perfect footwork, rimmed out. Prim steps away from the bucket and rattles one down. He's got 14 now, back to a two-point ball game, under four. He's impossible to stop if he has a mid-range, stretches it out a little bit more, he's going to be on Cam Crutwick's level. Who's going to get stops down the stretch here? Who's going to execute their plays? Back and forth. Benson fouled, Owens and Prim right there. And they get it on uh, Ross Owens. So free throws for Barrett Benson. When we return, it's coming down to the wire. Missouri State trying to get level in the league. SIU trying to stay in second place and start 9-3. and three. Coming down to the final three, 20-63-61. SIU, the Salukis riding the conference's player of the week, Eric McGill with 10 points tonight. Keith Fisher for Illinois State was the newcomer of the week, putting up 17 and a half points a game. McGill tonight with those 10 points, he also has five assists and three steals. Two good players, Fisher is gonna be a handful in the years to come, and Eric McGill is pretty much coming into his own right now as the senior leader for this Lukey basketball team, doing whatever it takes to get things done. If they need him to drive and score, he'll do it. Kick out threes, he'll do it. Defense, he'll do it. Get you a steal. He'll do whatever it takes. Now he he's enjoying this winning streak. Well, Wednesday night in Southern's win, it was the freshman Damask and Jones carrying the team late. Tonight it's been McGill and 22 points from Barrett Benson, the seniors. Opportunity for Barrett now to put the Salukis back up two possessions. Missouri State has shot four free throws tonight. Salukis have shot 15 free throws tonight. It's pretty amazing. A team that's as big as Missouri State, you figured they would draw more fouls. Yeah, especially with their two big horses. The Bears are going to deal with some crowd noise now. Down four again. Owens hesitated on the shot, and now he gets fouled. Oh, wow. Late call from behind, and they're going to give him two shots as well. Foul on the 
Russ Owens at the line. Here's the replay Owens again. Owens down the lane. Boy, just barely touched his shoulder blade, didn't he? He's going to get two free throws. I don't think he wanted to shoot that. No, and he didn't want to shoot that either. He's now one for three on the season from the free throw line. This is a guy who can stand out at 25 feet and hit 10 in a row. Right. Southern's got to block out now on rebounding. No cheap ones. Owens with six points, the best of his senior season. One possession game, final three minutes winding down here. SIU's won nine of the last ten from Missouri State. Salukis will be in the double bonus next opportunity. McGill one on one. Leaves for Brown. Out for Benson. Davis saves it. Oh, and Brown with a Superman save. How about that for Mr. Trent Brown? Right into the lap of a cheerleader. Clock winding down. Deep three, Brown. Missouri State unable to get closer than two points in the second half. Prim shuffling in, and it's a one-point ball game. Gage Prim now with 16. Well, SIU has had to win close games during this winning streak, and they'll take a timeout to try to steady things inside two minutes. Have three timeouts remaining. That's one of them. Coach Mullins has been very good at drawing up plays for out of bounds. Here's that last possession. Here's the save by Trent Brown. But the possession just never mounted to anything and a, and a quickly thrown up three at the end didn't help as well. And then Prim just set his, his tail on that block at the other end, got the pass and went right in and scored. Mike, another close one. Nine of the 13 losses from Missouri State have been by 10 points or less. On this winning streak for SIU, the last five games have been decided by an average of four points. So SIU's been the better close game team. Yes. 6,500 in attendance here tonight, they just announced. That shatters the previous season high. And they've been treated to a heck of a ball game. It's all offense in the first half. It's been mostly defense in the second half. Jones back in with four fouls. He can beat Owens on the dribble. Jones posting up. And off Missouri State out of bounds. And we'll have a conference here with the officials. Jerry Pollard coming in. And they're going to look at it. We're definitely under the two minutes. So we were, I, I was blocked at least. Could you I get a good look at I it? I couldn't see it at all. I was watching the play instead of the monitor. So I'm not really sure what they saw or what happened. See if we can get an angle here for you. We're going to be blocked. Yeah, and can't see that at all. I'm going to try it on this angle. De Silva tapped it from behind. And it looked like Lance never touched it, but it didn't look like it changed another direction after De Silva got his, his finger on it. And the call was Saluki basketball, so they're going to have to have irrefutable evidence to change it. Look at it again. And there's De Silva reaching. Oh, did it, it stick to the hand? It looked like it did stick to Lance's hand on that one. And yes, it's exactly what happened. So now it's going to come down to who can get a stop, who can execute on offense in this final 135. 
a free timeout for both teams. SIU with the best three-point defense in the conference. A top 15 nationally ranked defense as far as the scoring numbers. And they're trying to get one more stop. Barrett Benson in on Prim. Wide open hall. In and out. McGill fighting around Owens. And they get it away. A scary moment for Saluki fans and Bear fans wondering how that hall three didn't stick. Now it's the Bears' chance to get their stop and go down the other way. One minute remaining in regulation, one minute. Ten on the clock. Who's going to take the shot? Looks like it'll be McGill. Step back three. The Silva rips it away. And Missouri State has a chance to take the lead for the first time since the first half. De Silva whirls his way in and one for Tulio De Silva. Fourth foul on Barrett Benson. Gives the Bears a one point lead with De Silva going to the free throw line. Transition bucket. Barrett was inside the cylinder. So that was a pretty easy call for the officials. And De Silva now with an opportunity to give them a two point lead. Double double tonight for De Silva. That's his third on the season. Are they going to look to see if De Silva maybe cleared out with his left arm and catch Barrett Benson in the face? That could turn this completely upside down. It looked from our vantage point, just in seeing it in slow motion and fast, just a basketball play. But they've called him for different reasons as well. again Ooh, it was the left Ooh, elbow yeah. without question the left elbow did get him in the face but they've said basketball play what a heck of a, an adjustment from De Silva in midair and how about De Silva getting the rebound on one end running the floor being rewarded and getting the layup and the free throw He's a 66% free throw shooter. He's had a lot of time to think about this one as well. Both teams with two timeouts left. Both teams in the bonus the rest of the night. 32 Leo De Silva at the line for the Bears shooting one. And Way he missed short. it. And a foul. They got it on Missouri State and Josh Hall. And we'll come to the other end and shoot two free throws. And I believe it's Marcus Damask who's going to be at the free throw line. He was the closest one on the right side that you're looking at. Yes, it was Damask who got fouled by Hall. The absolute so Marcus. Marcus worst choice for Missouri State. 81% shooter. And regardless of what happens, Southern's going to have an opportunity with a basketball again, unless Missouri State would miss and get an offensive rebound. So this is a timeout taken by Missouri State. They think they're going to freeze Marcus DeMast. They're not. <laughs> but now you got to wonder. They've got De Silva. They've got Prim. Prim has had the better offensive night for sure, but you don't know what they're going to do. Close watch on this game tonight for you and I, who's in first place ahead of SIU and Indiana State. Loyola, who came into the day a game back of the Salukis. It's at Valparaiso after that, and then two more back at home. And the standings look like they look today. That one on February 23rd is going to be massive as it got flexed to national TV on ESPNU. Northern Iowa sold out their game at home with Drake today. It's their first sellout since their North Carolina game a couple of years ago. And if they keep playing well, they're going to continue to sell out. Missouri State has Drake, then they're at Indiana State and Bradley, and then 
home game against Loyola on February 22nd. It's amazing that there's so few games remaining in this what was a very long season. It seemed like just a month and a half ago. Well, Missouri State's trying to win their way into a tie-breaking game against Drake. The Bulldogs lost today. So Missouri State wins. They're both 6-6. Six and six, And that could be a game that would be an ultimate tiebreaker for do you get a bye, do you not get a bye? Top six in the league get a bye. Seven through ten play on Thursday night in St. Louis. To mask for the lead. Missed it. So some pressure off now from Missouri State. Eight second differential game in shot clock. Salukis so protecting their 10 game home court winning streak. They've won six games in a row to get within a game of first. Both teams are in the bonus. Southern double bonus. Missouri State would be in one in the bonus. In the hands of Black with seven. The top scorer, Cook, with five. Four. Crossover. Fall away. Off the mark. Prim fighting for it. Offensive rebound. Picked up by Black. And a timeout to Missouri State. Timeout on the floor. And that's what the biggest fear was. Their ability to go get offensive rebounds. They've got over, they've got 11 now in the ball game. And that was the biggest one of the night for them. Here's Cook going up. Prim there. And calling timeout was Jamonte Black, or actually he came from the bench. Black didn't get around to calling timeout, but Black got inside of Lance Jones on that defensive rebound. And so they're going to get the last shot now with an opportunity to win it or go to OT. All right, so everything available here. Plenty of time with 5.5. What do you like? You go to Keandre Cook and let him go to the hole. I mean, you have to take something to the basket. You don't want to leave a shot short. You want to give yourself every opportunity to go to the basket with Cook and then try to clean it up with De Silva and, and uh, Prim. The Bears and Salukis played in women's basketball a couple of weeks here. The Salukis won at the buzzer. Had an out-of-bounds play with about four seconds left. This time it's the Bears in a tie game. They did put time on the clock. 6.0 left. De Silva has been the man tonight. 12 yeah. points and 12 boards. And it's not out of the question. You just have him go up for a lob either. As athletic as he is. 6,000 plus on their feet. Owens to throw it in. Owens still looking. Black, the three. It's short. Benson the rebound. Looking for a timeout, and he gets it. And they'll put at least two seconds back on the clock. So they're going to look at this. Whether it's two or more is, I think, the discussion. Going to see it here. Benson had it. Called timeout immediately. And he shot it immediately as well, so it just depends when they give it to him. There's a lot going on in there. De Silva yep. going up for a tip back. The, the neck gets flipped up. Missouri State is out of timeouts. Well, how about Cook being denied the ball, De Silva yes. being denied the ball. Missouri State there had to go to... I guess their third or fourth option. Yeah, third or fourth option. That's not the guy they wanted shooting that last second shot. And again, I'm shocked that they put up a long three with six seconds on the clock. Point three? Okay, we're going to overtime. <laughs> 1.6, okay. That gives you at least a chance for a one dribble and a shot. Well, SIU still has a timeout left. Correct. So you can think about throwing it somewhere, catching quick, and calling a timeout. Correct. And it shows on the board they still have two left, but I don't think they still have two left. No, that timeout they just took would That's have been right. their second to last. Ronnie Suggs has the best arm on the team. SIU with... Suggs to throw it in. Jones, Benson, Damask, and McGill. And he can't move. He's got to stay in his position. Suggs with the chuck. Damask with the catch. 
Puts it up for the win. He got it! Marcus Damask, the Cardiac Dogs, have won seven in a row. They're looking at it, but I don't think there's any question he got it off. We were looking right at the board. They're reviewing it over at the bench. Jerry Pollard and Ed Crenshaw. And Marcus Damask took the lob. Here's the pass. Shot. He's got three guys Definitely on. Definitely out of his hand. That's going to count. And Southern is going to escape with a three-point win. It was out of his hand with .5 on the clock. Maybe they're seeing if there's more time left for Missouri State to attempt a shot, but I don't think there was because it released out of his hand with .5, and it had to go through the net. Here it is again. Look at the top of your screen. He releases it at .7, falls through at zero, and that's the ball game. Could we get any more excited? No. And this building is going to absolutely erupt. I think and they're trying to see if there was more time on the clock. Well, there's also some concern. There's a cheerleader that's that's down on the ground by the far end zone where yep. the celebration ensued. So Riley Hoistad, the athletic trainer for Southern, is out there attending to the cheerleader. She's now she's now sitting up, and that's a that's good news. Here's another look. Could could Marcus Damas run for mayor right now? <laughs> I think he could. And unseat any mayor in Southern Illinois. Oh man. So it should stand. The Saluki should move to nine and three. 19 points, the biggest three he's ever made in his young career. And the cheerleader that was down on the ground didn't want to get on the stretcher, and now I think they should make her get on the stretcher. Do you have any idea what they're looking at over there? Connor? I guess just to see if there's any time left, but it, it's it pretty appears pretty obvious clear. that it goes through at zero. He got fouled, too. He did, and that's besides the point. The clock was at zero, zero, zero when the ball went through the net. Surely they're not looking at the Damask elbow. I mean, he was, he looked to be the one that was fouled. And this game is over. Co near capacity crowd tonight, 6,500. And SIU has taken down preseason favorite Missouri State. And they've won 10 in a row at home and seven in a row overall. And what an amazing last shot draw up by Brian Mullins, Missouri State didn't want to get too close because they didn't want to foul him. And he was able to catch the ball spin and put it through the net with all zeros on the clock. Well, let's not let Ronnie Suggs be lost in that either. No. What a throw. Phenomenal throw when you are not allowed to move either. He had to maintain his position, and he looked one way and then came back and just flung it. 
perfectly to Damask at the top of the left side of the three-point area. Turned with two guys all over him and drained the three to win the game. Damask will join Trey Reamer here in a moment. Score should be six. Did they only give him a two? Yeah, that was a two. He was, was inside the arc. Okay. Yep. Should have gotten like five. Should have gotten guys five, yeah. And Damask is standing by right now with Trey Reamer. Trying to catch his breath, I'm sure. Games, 1.6 seconds left on the clock. Take us through that last play. Was that drawn up or what? Yeah, we practice these late game situations all the time, and this is the reason why. Ronnie made a great pass, and I got somewhat of a good look, and I guess the basketball gods are with us tonight, and they, they let it go in. Drained it, and I don't have to remind you of this, but 10 straight now here at the Banterra Center. It's like you guys can't get enough of this home cooking, am I right? That's right. I mean, look around. These fans are crazy. They're the best in the Valley, the best we've played so far, and I just love it. Congrats on the win. Marcus Damask, guys, back to you. Marcus Damask, a shot that will be remembered for a long, long time. Ronnie Suggs with the heave playing Grant Hill, and then Damask played Tristan Leitner. Yeah, the only thing I'm going to agree to is when Darren Brooks got to Sylvester Willis against Bradley. Same type of situation. Southern needed a bucket to win the game in the final seconds. It happened then. This was a much more difficult shot, and Southern comes away with a two-point win, seven-game winning streak, alone in second place currently. Trying to get down from the buzz of this oh, one. Oh, wow. It's going to take a while. For Mike Trude, our entire crew, Trey Reamer on the sidelines. Connor Onion saying this was a true honor. What a game tonight. Salukis win it. Marcus Damask at the horn, 68-66 for a seven-game winning streak. Our next telecast is Saluki Men's Basketball. It's Wednesday, February 12th. The Salukis travel to Valpo to play, face the Crusaders at 7 o'clock on ESPN+. Plus. Watch this entire game on replay, as well as other productions on our ESPN family of networks. And logging on to WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of the Missouri Valley Conference on ESPN.